Happy holidays, everybody, and I'm glad you're joining me for my 10 gift ideas for that gamer in your life, whatever kind of gamer you have as a friend or a loved one. So that's why I've got these all wrapped up. They are a secret, and each one of these games fits a style of play or a kind of gamer that you absolutely can imagine once I open up the gift. So I've named them for the type of gamer and you'll definitely get a good feel for the level and style of gameplay based on my description. So I'm sure there's a game here out of all of my 10 that's perfect for you know who. So let's jump right into it. I feel like this is <laughs> like Christmas morning almost and I'm really excited to open all these gifts. It's no surprise that I'm the one that actually wrapped them all, but there's just something fun about gift giving and of course receiving something that someone specifically picked out just for you. So let's get started. I think I'm going to start off with this little cutie. This one says, to the team player. Hmm. Okay, it's nice and small. Sounds like there's cards. <laughs> ah! All right, the crew, the quest for planet nine. Yes, this is definitely for the team player. This is a cooperative card game and at its heart is trick taking. I think this game is perfect for the holiday season too because you are with family and friends, usually for an extended period of time. I myself am visiting my family back in Kansas and we're gonna be there for a week. So I'm gonna see my sister and her family and my parents and probably some friends from high school. And so the crew would be a great game for me to play with them and to have a, just a great time being on the same team and working together, winning and losing together. Of course, when you lose, you just get to play again. But this is a fantastic, very compact card game that is probably unlike anything anyone else has played. And it offers that kind of newness or that freshness to card games and to trick-taking games. Speaking of family, I've got some wreaths that I've hung up on my game shelves behind me. They are both wreaths that my dad has made. He is a prolific uh, wreath maker and crafter and he does some fantastic stuff. So as the games start disappearing, you're probably going to see more and more of the white wreath and it's really pretty. So um, enjoy the decorations in my gaming basement uh, thanks to my dad. So. My next game, I want to grab this one. Okay, so this one is a little heavier, uh, much heavier than the crew. Um, it says a gift for the artist. So let's find out the artist in your life and what game they need to have on their shelves right now. Ha! Canvas. This is not only a game for artists, it's a game for the eyes. So your artist uh, in your life will appreciate it, but this is the cover. This is like the box. It is beautiful. It actually stands up on one of the top stacks of our shelves. And there's even a place on the back of the game to hook it like it's a piece of art, which is great. So that is the theme of Canvas. You are building these um, sleeves of pictures that have three different cards in them and they create a name, they create this um, kind of design and what you're going for are these goals that everyone is going for. And every time you make a picture, which every player gets to make three of, you get to score it based on composition and balance and style and all of these really cool things. This is a great game. It's a fast game. It's a beautiful game and it's perfect for the artist in your life. Scales one to five and you'll want to play it again right away. Okay. I'm ready to jump into one of the bags. I know bags aren't as fun as uh, unwrapping gifts, but uh, that one looks really nice, right? Okay, so this says, let me grab you, to Ms. Creative. Okay, let's find out what Ms. Creative needs in her life. Whoa, hello. All right, this is Cartographer's Collector's Edition. 
this is super cool because we have cartographers, just the base game. But in this collector's edition, I'm actually going to show you because we just got this. We have all of these colored pencils that help you really enjoy the game uh, graphically. So you want to be creative. You're going to get to draw all kinds of shapes and figures in this game. You've got all the colored pencils to match. You also have all of these different, oh my gosh. So they have all of these different things. We have um, Heroes, um, Neb Neblis, I think it's BB Neblis, um, Undercity and Afril. All of these different um, extra things that you don't get in the base game. And then of course all the rules for it. Of course, these maps, you're going to get so many different maps than what you're used to. So this um, collector's edition has the, the game that you're familiar with, right? It has this board that you're familiar with, uh, which is front and back, two different sides. But then it's got these three other stacks. Oh, here are the boring pencils at the very bottom. So you've got some really cool designs here. Um, it's the game itself, but I mean, it's just fantastic and your your creative person is going to adore playing this game and having a really great time with the way this game works so you're drawing on your individual board based on the choices that you get um, the the scoring is really interesting in a previous video I've talked about it uh, this is a dynamic game and a super replayable game all right on we go I want to grab this green one for me, that really pops. Um, I love green, <laughs> so let's just go for it. So I've got this game here, and it says, for the abstract thinker. Hmm, abstract thinker, I wonder what it could be. There are a handful of abstract games that I am a fan of, despite having, I guess, some challenges with abstract games, but this is probably a good one, particularly if it comes from you know who. So here I go. Wow, I really wrapped this good. <laughs> All right, fantastic, Azul. So I think that the base game of Azul is the perfect gift to give to someone who's never played a game with beautiful tactile um, components and with the kind of um, gameplay that Azul offers. There are some fantastic um, choices that a player has to make. So drawing from the center is one of them. That's cool and it's super easy but you have to make a lot of choices so that you bring back the tiles you need to design the design that you're going for which everyone has a personal individual design. It is a fast game, it is a straightforward game, it's a beautiful game, and yeah for that abstract thinker in your group perfect particularly if they don't have this now you you know what's going to come next if they have the base game get them stained glass of Sintra or summer pavilion or the brand new one which is queen's garden oh my gosh there's so many azul options i'm recommending the base this is a great place to start for that abstract thinker in your gamer group all right which one to pick next I think I'm going to pick the cute dog bag in the corner. Let me see what it has to offer. Okay, this one says, To the Hungry One. So, I know you can't eat games, at least not yet, uh, but it's probably got some food theme to it, and there are a lot of really great food theme games out there, so which one did I pick for my gift game? Aha! Sushi Go Party. Now, I say the big one, right? I say Sushi Go Party and not just Sushi Go. They're both incredibly affordable, super cute tins, great components. But I'm going to say Party because there's just so much here that if you love the base game or you like the style of drafting and card collection, you're going to love this game and you are going to play it and you're going to create your own menu every single time with so many options to pick from. So this game is fantastic for 
just a quick card game and the cards are just adorable. They are cute. This is a drafting game where you have a hand, you pick one, pass your cards to the left, play your card, and at the end of the round of collecting and drafting, you just score up. Uh, then you keep your, oh, you keep your puddings if you're playing with puddings. This is great. So you're collecting cards, trying to maximize the scoring. Everyone gets to do their individual scoring based on what cards they collect. It's fantastic. It is perfect for that foodie in your group. Because if people like food, <laughs> you're going to love this. It's so stinking cute. This is still probably the cutest game we have. I love it. I love the artwork. I love the gameplay. I'll always play a game of Sushi Go. Okay, five down, five more to go. You're probably already writing down a couple of the games I've mentioned so far. Great, I mean, buy these people in your lives these fantastic games. Um, also, if you like the suggestions that I'm giving and you're looking forward to the next five, thank you for liking, subscribing, writing comments in the comment section below. Um, I read those, I appreciate them, and thank you for your support. So. On to the next game. I'm going to grab this guy. He looks a little lonely out here all by himself. It is a game for uh, the newbie. Hmm. So my idea of what that means is probably this is a game for someone who's just kind of getting into board gaming or maybe doesn't know what to buy because there are just so many things out there. This might be that perfect entry level game. Let's find out. witchcraft. Yeah, I know this is brand new, but wow, I can't tell you how many times I played this game. I mean, I'm into double digits by now. And that's kind of rare because I get so many games and I have to try a lot of stuff and I just don't ever find that I have enough time to really just play, 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 play. And I have found the time to play, play, play Whirling Witchcraft. It's a fantastic um, game that, that is really quick. It's surprisingly fast. You are a witch who is essentially brewing these particular potions, taking ingredients from your own workbench that has a limited supply, and you are running these cards that give you other little cubies, which are ingredients that you send to the witch to your left, and you're trying to overflow their potion, their, their workbench, and you are getting the overflow back. So if you successfully overflow their, their cauldron, their pot, you get points and the first player to reach or exceed five triggers the end of the game and you count up how many of those overflow points you earned and then that's going to be the winner. The other cool thing here is there's card drafting. You are taking the cards you got from the player to your left, picking one, and then passing them to this person. Well, that person is sending you cubes. There's some really fun player interaction here, but it's only with the player to your right and left, a lot like in Seven Wonders. This game will blow people's minds with how just straightforward, easy, and fun, particularly replayable it is. So for that newbie who's just entering the game hobby, or for an entry-level game you want to play with people who are ready to try something maybe a little bit juicier, but not too juicy, Whirling Witchcraft is perfect for that. Okay, so four. I'm going to pick this black bag over here with the cutie robins on them. Okay, here we go. This is for Mr. Dexterous. Hmm. You know, I like a good dexterity game, but I don't think that a crokinole board can fit in here. <laughs> so let's find out what's in this one. Hey! Rail Pass. Rail Pass is a very fun cooperative game where players are not necessarily needing to be too dexterous, but the dexterity really gets in the way of your brain function. And I find that, yes, there's a time to this, you're, you're timed, but everyone's working together and you are trying to pass people trains. So you have to just remember that you have a train in your hand and there's little cubies in your train and the cubies can fall out and the train can just be abandoned by you because you just leave it 
on a route or under a bridge or just to the side. And anytime you do that, that's the dexterity component is you've got to successfully make these pass-offs while you're kind of under time pressure with the players you're playing with. This is all about getting the cubes from your train station to the train station that matches the cube color. That's it. And you can only load up so many cubes and in so many, in, in whichever order that the cubes come down from your, your train um, kind of run. And you can only pass to people that are adjacent to you, which might be across the table, depending on that route configuration, depending on how many players are in the game. This does go up to six players, and I found that the more the better. I love a good six player game of rail pass, and you're not talking to each other. That's the other fun thing. The only thing you can say is toot toot. Whenever you pass a train to someone to let them know that you are ready to have them receive a train, you have to go toot toot, toot toot. <laughs> Toot hoot, and you're just toot tooting and it's just great <laughs> so dexterity is needed for this game but it's not the most dexterous game it's just a fun game and it's probably a game that people won't expect to get and it's just lovely cooperation is key and the best toot tooting you can do is part of the fun so grab a game of rail pass and five other players um, particularly if you are the gift giver, give this to someone when you have five other players sitting around because you'll want to open it up and play it right away. All right, on to the next. This one looks particularly interesting. It says it's to the strategist. Well, that sounds like it's to me. <laughs> so I'm excited to open up this one and find out what you're going to give your gamer friend who is the strategist of the group. Aha! Nidavalier. This is definitely the game for the thinker strategist, someone who wants to spend a lot of time figuring out steps ahead. So in this game, there is a really great component of essentially bidding for um, order uh, in priority selection. So what I mean by that is players have these sections to place these coins that have a numerical value on it and the person who has the highest numerical value for one, two, and three, those top three spots on your player area means that you get to get priority in selecting cards from those particular areas, one, two, or three. And you can essentially say, well, I really want to put my high value here because I really need that particular card. These cards come with values and suits, and you're collecting these cards to gain different ways of, of victory points. So you might gain a scale of victory points in the green cards one way versus just getting straight up victory points in the light blue cards. There are really wonderful extra cards you get when you have one of each of the colors. You get to grab a, a person that's a unique character that gives you a special ability or extra victory points or another way to score. This is the game that you, that you play when you want to have a real think, but not obviously spend hours and hours and hours playing. This is thematic and beautiful and kind of wonderful. I did a three things I like about this game. So if you want to watch more about what this game offers, please go and check it out. It's fantastic. This is for your strategist and they will love you forever if you buy them this game. <laughs> Looking at the last two gifts left, I know you want me to open the yellow one, but because it's the biggest one, I'm leaving it for last. Sorry. So let's open up this guy. This one says it's for the puzzler. Oh, it sounds so exciting. So the puzzler, this sounds like something that might be like an escape room or some puzzly feature where you're putting all of this information together, maybe like a deduction. Mm. Here we go. It is. It's the initiative. This is a cooperative game. There is this really wonderful storybook that is part of the 
base game, which is kind of like a legacy style. You're not necessarily um, stickering and tearing up things in a legacy game, but it does have that feature where it's ongoing and you're trying to figure it out. So you've got that feature. There's puzzles, there's code breaking. Um, yeah, there's just some really fun stuff in here. I haven't played a game like this and I just finished our last mission and found out that there's even more to it. Wow. I mean, ugh, blew my mind. So the initiative, even though we have gone through the campaign, we're going to keep playing it. There's some fun stuff in here. So kudos to just a fun, um, you know, just neat, brand new kind of game experience for me that I played and absolutely adored. So this is for your puzzler. This is for your player who wants to crack all the codes and figure things out when you've got just enough information to figure it out and you want to be the first one. There's a lot of deduction here and there's a whole bunch of teamwork. So have a great time with the initiative. All right, my table is looking super bare. It seems like we've only got one more gift left. Let's check it out. It says, for the one who can't make up their mind. We all know who that is, right? Mm -hmm. So this game is huge. It's very heavy, extremely heavy. Yeah, it's really, it's heavy. I don't know how I wrap this. So for that person who can't make up their mind, seems like someone who likes to try a lot of stuff. You know, like, I feel like sometimes when we open up like a new um, kind of dungeon crawl and you get to be a character and that character has special cards and unique weapons and like unique abilities, I sometimes get overwhelmed because I want to play them all and I know I can't. And so I want to try something new, but then there's always that favorite where I'm like, oh, I really like that kind of gameplay. This sounds like what this is to me. So let's find out what I suggest for the one who can't make up their mind. Ah. <laughs> Merchant's Cove. This is the game. This is it. Because in this game, you get to play a totally unique character that does things that nobody else does in the game and it actually works really well. The balance is there and I feel like this is the game you keep coming back to over and over and over again because you want to play all of the base characters. There are expansion characters that you can add to the game and you can play those in any combination. Um, some of the characters are a little bit more complex than others but once you figure out the base game you can play any of the characters. And these characters do just cool things that you have to kind of puzzle out because it's all about your worker placement. You essentially are saying, I want to send this worker here and then I want to do this thing, but you can't do that thing until you move that worker to a different place. And then you can go back to it, but you can't do the same thing twice. And what you're doing is you're trying to create um, these sellable items at market. You're going to Merchant's Cove and you're selling your stuff. So everybody kind of works down to the same kind of item that's a color and a particular value and those are all the same but how you get there is totally different. You might be working with dice. You might be working with a twister spinner thing that, that tells you what you get on the spinner wheel. You might be working with marbles. Um, it's just so creative and fun and every player gets a whole bin with like all their component parts. They get a sheet of paper that tells them how everything works and the rules for your character. You want, this is for the player who can't make up their mind because they say, I want to play with this person today and they're like, I want to play with that person. I want to go back to the first. It's just loads of fun and you do want to play everybody and you want to play everybody twice. Because the first time you're learning them, the second time you're working it. Because you know how they function, you know how that, that character thinks and like how to maximize their turn. So for me, Merchant's Cove absolutely fits that. If it, it feels good to me, it plays well. This is the biggest and probably most expensive game on my gift 
a suggestion list. But boy, if you know that person who would love this, this is the best gift you could give them. And then maybe on their own, they'll start buying those expansion characters and adding them to the game. And then they'll invite you over and you can play this game with them. It's a great gift. It's a great game. And I think it's perfect for that person who just can't make up their mind. Thanks everybody for joining me for this holiday gift giving video. I'm sure you found at least one of these 10 games appealing and perfect for that person that you know. I think they're all great games, that's why I suggested them. So let me know what you think in the comments below and have fun giving gifts, particularly the gifts of games. I think that's the perfect way to give a gift is to share an experience with someone and leave them with something they can play in some of these cases over and over and over again having a fantastic time at the table with loved ones. I'll see you next time.